So you've had one of the most successful careers in history at in investing huge sums of money. As you look at where we are in the cycle, what do you think normal investors should do? You say well, it's not an immediate issue, but a couple of years out, we may have a downturn. How do you invest a, a retirement portfolio okay. in light of that? I think that there are two poor key parts of investing. There is what is your strategic asset allocation, and then there's moving around, there's tactical bets and alpha. And I think the average man should not try to make tactical bets to try to produce alpha because he's going to get it wrong. Alpha is better than average. Market yeah. In market. other words, to say, now's the time to buy, now's the market time to timing, sell. Market picking. timing. Don't do that. The history of it is clear. I'm, I remember uh, learning this um, when Peter Lynch uh, ran the Magellan Fund. And that was the best stock performing fund in all the stock market when the stock market was best. And the average investor lost money in it. And how is that possible? And the reason it's possible is when it was very hot and the advertisements were there, people bought. And when it was, had a period of bad performance, they got out and they got scared. And so market timing is a very difficult thing. It's a very difficult thing for we who put hundreds of millions of dollars each year. And I, we have 1,600 people at Bridgewater. It's a difficult game. And so I would say that they should not try to play that game, that they should understand the, how to achieve balance and diversification um, in, in operating. Now, how to do that is a conversation that's a, you know, a, a longer conversation. Uh, Tony Robbins uh, interviewed me about it, and he made a very simple uh, book um, as part of investing. It's described in there. But the, you, there's ways of achieving balance that doesn't cost you return and significantly reduces your, your risk. So I would recommend that they come to a, uh, a balanced portfolio, what we call an all-weather portfolio, but something that means that they're not exposed to any particular type of environment. And it's the same portfolio in inning seven of the debt cycle? That's right. If you're going to play the cycle, then realize um, that the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets, is the same, okay? And then you, you sell when everything is great and everybody's extrapolating the past and you're near the end of the cycle. Because as you come in, as your unemployment rate gets low and asset prices are high and debts are being built up and everyone's extrapolating the past, the past will not perform up to expectations. And that is the time to sell. But it's very difficult for people to step away from the crowd and to do that. And, and what do you watch to know that everyone is now excited and everyone's extrapolating into the future and I'll give you an example which is the two years ago we talked lots of concerns then about the stock market and valuation and you said Henry relax we're in the middle of the cycle now you say we're in the seventh inning what do I as a normal person look at to tell me okay it's one out in the ninth uh -huh. time to start transferring and getting ready for disaster okay um, first of all, you look at how much slack is left in the cycle. Okay, where's the unemployment rate? Where's the um, capacity? What is the central bank doing? Is it tightening monetary policy or is it easing monetary policy? That's one. So how much slack? Second, you look at how much debt has been used to finance those purchases. Okay. Third, um, you look at the um, amount of uh, sentiment, the, uh, you know, the, the, the euphoria. Uh, and fourth, I would say, you can see the pricing of how much debt is, how much growth is built into the pricing. In other words, by comparing the yield on stocks and the yield on bonds, and you look at the pricing, you look at credit spreads and things like that, they paint a picture of the future. That's the discounted future. And if you look at that picture of the discounted future, and that picture is an extrapolation of what happened in the past to something that's unlikely to happen going forward, then you would know that prices are, are, are too high and then you have to think about timing. 